This video is going to show how Trump deceived you guys. He deceived a lot of Americans. However, he didn't get the support of the majority. And for those who are politically duff, dumb, and blind, as well as gullible, who drink the Kool-Aid that Trump offered them, remember, these voters put Trump first and he will put them last. The same way people put politicians first and they will put you last. Now, Trump said he was self-funded, but we know that was a lie. Trump said he would drain the swamp, but the swamp got 10 feet higher. We already see that Trump does not side with the oppressed, but he sides with the oppressors. Look at how he sides with Israel, but at the same time he says he's for law and order when the Israeli government, though ironically, is breaking laws and oppressing people, especially the Palestinians. Trump says he's against terrorism, yet he praises war criminals like Vladimir Putin and hangs out with war criminals and terrorists like Benjamin Netanyahu and these bankers that ruins people's lives. It's sad how politicians use and abuse religion for their own worldly gains, ironically. Trump's hypocritical and ignorant Christian followers are disillusional. They are delusional. And they don't see it. Trump brags about being a Christian yet he does not know his own religion. He goes out there and supports stuff against his own corrupted book, his corrupted Bible. He brags about Christmas when it is a pagan tradition. Trump claims to love Jesus, peace be upon him, yet he mocks the handicapped women and minorities. Trump has casinos and beauty pageants and does other bad shady deals. Or I should say, immoral things. But his supporters, some disillusional supporters of his claims he's the modern messiah. Trump supporters are beyond disillusional. Let's take a look at his cabinet now. His treasury of secretary chose Steve Mnuchin. And this guy is a Goldman Sachs partner as well as running a bank and switching its name to One West. And in the, with this bank he foreclosed illegally. On people's houses and he took a grandma's house because she owed 27 cents because of the bank's faulty paperwork again this guy's an oppressor he's greedy and his entire career was based on fraud now let's move to someone else in Trump's cabinet that loves to steal homes also and this guy's David Freeman a bankruptcy lawyer now this guy believes that Israel's capital should be moved to Jerusalem as well as moving the US Embassy to Jerusalem and he also does not want a two-state solution so what's going to happen to the Palestinians if this guy gets his ways either it's going to be a one state and the Palestinians and Israelis will mix and the Israelis will get outvoted which they don't want that to happen so pretty much a genocide is going to happen that's what they want it's sad but moving on to the next scumbag Zionist who loves destroying people's homes, John Bolton. He thinks he, I, I, I honestly believe he's learned the lesson that the Iraq war didn't help us as a country. Well, I know who hasn't learned his lesson because it's who he is essentially, and that's John Bolton. That guy won't quit. His desire for power and to, to wheedle his way into every Republican administration is relentless. The neocon network helps him. Here he is, John Bolton, the man NBC reports as being, I love this phrase, actually I hate it, eyed for Deputy Secretary of State, has advocated for bombing Iran. Here he was just last year. This is Bolton. Just as Israel twice before has struck nuclear weapons programs in the hands of hostile states, I'm afraid, given the circumstances, that's the only real option open to us now. Right now? Or are you saying leading into the future? No, I would have done this five or six years ago because the earlier you strike, the more damage you can do. Oh, my God. Bolton on Fox. An unbelievable combination. That was a strong booster. Of course, he was at the Iraq invasion. Still is. In 2002, Bolton peddled bad information about that country's weapons program. Quote, we are confident, he said at the time, that Saddam Hussein has hidden weapons of best 
destruction and production facilities in Iraq. Well, last May, Bolton continued to defend the invasion. That's last month, telling the Washington Examiner, a conservative newspaper, I still think the decision to overthrow Saddam was correct. I love the way it's so prissy, correct. He echoed that sentiment as recently as yesterday. Here we go. I was a member of George W. Bush's administration. Uh, he supported the Iraq War. Of course I supported the Iraq War. I've written uh, on the subject, some people would probably say endlessly, about what the lessons are to be learned from it. Uh, I've put it out on the record. I've never hidden my views from anybody, and I absolutely don't back away from them. Senator Paul, isn't it interesting <laughs> that the ones who back the Iraq War also back going into Libya, also back going into Syria, and they always have one, like in a little Pez dispenser, a little candy dispenser. They always have the next war they want us to fight. There's always one they pushed about another war comes out. They always want a new war and Bolton's classic. Your thoughts? John Bolton was on the project for a new American century which wanted a new Pearl Harbor which can be used as a pretext for war. The project for a new American century wanted to invade seven countries in five years. John Bolton is a warmongering coward who wants to invade more countries. Moving on to the next coward, Trump's Secretary of State. Trump considered the warmongering psychopathic loser John Bolton but he picked the thug and CEO of ExxonMobil, Rex Tillerson. If all those wars are for oil, which in reality it's for more than oil, but for the sake of argument, let's just say these wars are for oil. Imagine picking the CEO of ExxonMobil as your secretary of state. Moving on, he's chosen Ben Carson as the head of his housing and urban development. And Ben Carson spokesman or someone like his spokesman, Armstrong Williams, said Dr. Carson feels he has no government experience. He's never run a federal agency. The last thing he would want to do was to take a position that could cripple the presidency. End of the quote. Ironically, Ben Carson wanted to be the president. He is a brain surgeon and works in the medical field, yet does not take a job in a health-related cabinet post. Simple question. Does the Bible have authority over the Constitution? He said that's a simple question. That I know. is not a simple well, question by any simple, stretch of the imagination. A, a simply <laughs> worded question. How's that? I, I think probably what you have to do is uh, ask a very specific question about a specific passage of the Bible and a specific portion of the Constitution. Uh, I don't think you can answer that question other than out of very specific context. Then we move on and we see people who donated or funded Trump's campaign, even though Trump said he self-funded. You have Linda McMahon who donated $6 million, whose husband is Vince McMahon of the WWE, and she will be the head of the Small Business Administration. We see how corrupt this crook Donald Trump is. Self-funded? No, he's not. Then you move to one of his possible heads of the CIA, Trump wanted, or wants, Jose Rodriguez, who created the torture program with George Bush. Jose Rodriguez also deleted 92 videos of waterboarding conducted on two people. Yet Trump keeps crying about Hillary's emails and he wants him, her to show her Goldman Sachs speeches, yet he won't show his taxes and he's praising a guy who's deleted 92 videos. They're all criminals, from Hillary to Trump. Then you have Jose Rodriguez, this guy supported waterboarding and other forms of torture. Any regrets? No, no regrets. Not I would do it all again. Then you have Trump's strategist, Stephen Bannon, a Goldman Sachs partner and president of Breitbart News, which spews out propaganda and lies. And then you have Gary Cohen, the president and CEO of Goldman Sachs, who Trump Trump wants him to head his Council of Economic Advisors. Then you have another greedy fraud like Jay Clayton, partner at Mahaton Law Firm, Soviet and Cornwell, whose clients are Goldman Sachs. And remember, Jay Clayton's wife works for Goldman Sachs. Remember when Trump attacked Ted Cruz because Cruz's wife, Heidi Cruz, works for Goldman Sachs. And remember, these politicians, Donald Trump and Ted Cruz, bad guys, corrupt people. And then you have the Jay Clayton guy who helped banks get TARP relief 
for a total amount of $5 billion. That's just one example, but we're going to move on. Then you have Trump, who picked Rick Perry as energy secretary. And ironically, Rick Perry was the one who wanted to destroy the Department of Energy. And I will tell you, it's three agencies of government when I get there that are gone. Commerce, education, and the, um, uh, what's the third one there? Let's see. <laughs> you need five. Oh, five. Yeah, okay. So five. commerce, education, and uh, the um, uh, uh, EPA. EPA. There you go. No, okay. Let's talk. Let's talk deposition. Seriously? Um, Is EPA no, the one you were talking about? Or? No, sir. No, sir. We were talking about the. Um, agencies of government. EPA needs to be rebuilt. But There's you no can't, doubt about that. But you that. can't name the third one. The third agency of government. Yeah. I would. I would do away with the education, uh, the uh, <laughs> commerce. I, I, commerce, and let's see. Oh I can't. The third one. I can't. Sorry. <laughs> Oops. Someone else in Trump's cabinet, former CIA director James Woolsey. This guy was on the project for a new American century and these were the same guys who wanted to invade five countries in seven years and they wanted, like I said earlier, a new Pearl Harbor and that new Pearl Harbor was September 11, 2001 which they used as a pretext and again James Woolley resigns from Trump's cabinet less than a few weeks before Trump's inauguration about 10 days after 9-11, I went through the Pentagon and I saw Secretary Rumsfeld and, and Deputy Secretary Wolfowitz. I went downstairs just to say hello to some of the people on the joint staff who had used, used to work for me. And one of the generals called me in. He said, sir, you got to come in. You got to come in and talk to me a second. I said, well, you're too busy. He said, no, no. He says, you, we've made the decision we're going to war with Iraq. This was on or about the 20th of September. I said, we're going to war with Iraq. Why? He said, I don't know. <laughs> he said, I guess they don't know what else to do. So uh, I said, well, did they find some information collect connecting Saddam to al-Qaeda? He said, no, no. He says, there's nothing new that way. They just made the decision to go to war with Iraq. He said, I guess it's like we don't know what to do about terrorists, but we've got a good military and we can take down governments. And um, he said, I guess if... If the only tool you have is a hammer, every problem has to look like a nail. So I came back to see him a few weeks later, and by that time we were bombing in Afghanistan. I said, are we still going to war with Iraq? And he said, oh, it's worse than that. He said, he reached over on his desk, he picked up a piece of paper, and he said, I just, he said, I just got this down from upstairs, meaning the Secretary of Defense's office today, and he said, this is a memo that describes how we're going to take out seven countries in five years starting with Iraq and then Syria, Lebanon, Libya, Somalia, Sudan, and finishing off Iran. The truth is about the Middle East is, had there been no oil there, it would be like Africa. Nobody is threatening to intervene in Africa. The problem is the opposite. We keep asking for people to intervene and stop it. And there's, uh, there's no question that the presence of petroleum throughout the region has sparked great power involvement. Whether that was the specific motivation for the coup or not, I can't tell you, but, but there was definitely, there's always been this attitude that somehow we could intervene and use force in the region. On a side note, James Woolsey lied and said Iraq did 9-11. So again, why is this man in Trump's cabinet? This goes to show you how corrupt Trump really is. But moving on, other people that Trump is considering in his cabinet or near him are war criminals like James Mattis, a.k.a. Mad Dog Mattis, another war criminal like Michael Flynn. Confirmation hearings for President-elect Donald Trump's key cabinet nominees begin Monday. One of the first to go before Congress will be Trump's pick for Homeland Security Secretary, retired Marine General John Kelly. Kelly was formerly the head of United States Southern Command, where he oversaw the military prison at Guantanamo. He's repeatedly testified to Congress that the U.S.-Mexico border represents a threat to national security, leading many to worry he'll escalate the militarization of the border and U.S. immigration policy. 
policy overall. He's one of three generals Trump has nominated for cabinet and cabinet-level positions, including retired General James Mad Dog Mattis as defense secretary. Mattis is likely to face questioning about his actions in May 2004, when he ordered an attack on a small Iraqi village that killed more than 40 people attending a wedding ceremony. Mattis went on to lead United States Central Command from 2010 to 2013, but the Obama administration cut short his tour over concerns Mattis was too too hawkish on Iran, reportedly calling for a series of covert actions there. Mattis only retired from the military in 2013, meaning he'll need Congress to waive rules requiring defense secretaries to be civilians for seven or more years after leaving the military. The rules are in place to ensure civilian control over the U.S. armed forces. Trump's third general is retired Army Lieutenant General Michael Flynn who's been appointed national security adviser. Flynn is well known for his anti-Muslim worldview, having called Islam a cancer and saying fear of Muslims is rational. His position does not require Senate confirmation, despite the fact that, during Trump's campaign, he railed against generals. I know more about ISIS than the generals do, believe me. If Generals Kelly and Mattis are both confirmed, Trump will have more generals in his cabinet than any administration since World War II. In the councils of government, we must guard against the acquisition of unwarranted influence, whether sought or unsought, by the military-industrial complex. The potential for the disastrous rise of misplaced power exists and will persist. We must never let the weight of this combination endanger our liberties. And other deplorables Trump wants is people like Mike Pompeo and Jeff Sessions. And remember, he wants Jeff Sessions as attorney general. And this guy said that, Jeff Sessions said that he thought the KKK was cool until he found out they smoked pot. Now, I'm sorry to tell you people. Actually, no, this is a fact. It's not cool to oppress people. The KKK murdered, they were thugs, and they killed innocent people. And Jeff Sessions thought they were cool until he found out they smoked pot. What kind of deplorables are these people? And then you have people in the alternative media and mainstream media deceiving, spewing out lies, propaganda, selective journalism, purposely leaving out stories, promoting Zionism, being Islamophobes. Blaming and scapegoating innocent people and never blaming the oppressors. We are going to drain the swamp.